Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about state variables and here primarily I uh, will be discussing example 16.10 and this is on the request of a student. So the primarily uh, use of a state variable is when there is a circuit with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. But this can be equally applicable if there is a single input and single output. And like the question that we are going to solve first, 16.10, this has a single input and a single output. Now there are two equations that we will be dealing. The first equation is called the state equation. Uh, which is given uh, as shown here and the second equation is the output equation and this is written as this. Now when we write x dot that means it is the differential dx by dt. Now, this variable x is the state variable uh, which is v and i. Now look here this is the input this is output but there are two more variables that is current i and voltage v. So the state variables are the currents through the inductor and voltage across the capacitor. And then uh, this z is the input variable which is vs in this case. Then the transfer function of the system is found by taking the Laplace transform of equation. So we take Laplace transform of the state equation to find the transfer function. And as we know that Laplace of a differential function is SFS minus F0 uh, negative and this is the initial condition. So if we assume that the initial condition is 0 then the Laplace transform of differential is SFS. So we will use this here. So this is actually uh, ds uh, dt, so this can be written as sxs. Similarly a and this s can be written as xss and b and this z can be written as zs. So th this is in terms of a Laplace uh, transform. Okay, so we were here and from here now we will manipulate, we take this on the left hand side, we get this, take common xs, so we get this equation. Now since we will be solving uh, in terms of a matrix, therefore we multiply s by i identity matrix. Now identity matrix I hope you remember is of this form. So we are multiplying it by identity matrix which is actually 1. So anything multiplied by 1 remains 1. And from here xs can be written as bzs divided by this term. And if we write in terms of a uh, inverse function then this will go up it will become minus 1. So this is the uh, final equation. And now uh, this was the state equation. Now we will write the output equation, this was the output equation, similarly uh, the transform of the output equation will be ys cxs, just keep comparing these two and from here also we take, uh, we put the value of xs, now this was the value we got xs, so our equation will become like this taking common zs, so this is the equation and the transfer function we know is output over input, so output is ys, input is zs, so we bring this on the uh, denominator, so this is what is left and this is our transfer function. Okay, now a couple of constants that we have used you don't have to really understand this but just for the sake of knowledge reproducing a constant is the system matrix b is the input coupling matrix 
C is the output matrix and D is the feed forward matrix. Now in most cases D is equal to 0 therefore the transfer function will become as shown here. So this is what we will be solving. Now I have written a couple of steps for uh, my understanding and uh, you can follow these steps but right now you will not be able to understand this so we will be dealing with one uh, at a time ok coming to the example find the state space representation of the circuit determine the transform function of the circuit when Vs is the input so this is the input and Ix is the output and these are the values that are given for R, L and C. Now keep in mind or remember this that V S is input and I S is X is output. Okay, so the first step is select the inductor current I and capacitor voltage V as the state variable. So we are selecting that, we select inductor current I and capacitor voltage V as the state variable. The second step is find DI DT which is called I dot and DV DT which is called V dot in terms of the state variables V and I. Now how do we find that? First of all we are uh, uh, interested to find I dot and V dot which is actually di dt and dv dt. Now di dt we can find from the voltage equation across inductor. We know that vl is l di dt so from here we can find di dt and similarly dv dt we can find from the capacitor current equation. Capacitor current is c dv dt. So we will use these two to find the derivatives. Okay, so this is what we want to find, this is what we have been, uh, uh, we can use. Now applying KCL at node 1, so now at we are here and we are applying KCL, so current entering is I, current leaving is Ix and the other current leaving is Ic. And from here we take IC on the left hand side we get this equation IC is C dV dt I remains I Ix is actually V over R now this voltage V across capacitor is also across this resistor because they are in parallel so Ix can be written as V over R and now dividing by C we get this equation And so this dv dt can be written as v dot. So this is what we are getting from the circuit in terms of v dot. Similarly, if we take the KVL equation around the outer loop, so this loop, it will be vs is equal to vl plus v. Manipulating VL is minus VVS, VL we know is LDI DT minus V and VS dividing by L we get DI DT in terms of this and DI DT is I dot so this is our second equation. Okay now we have got these two equations now we have to confirm do they match with the state equation or is there anything missing and now if you if you look carefully this is we have the two state variables v and i here but the state variable part this part is present but the input part is not present similarly in this case if you see one of the state variable is present v but I state variable is not present and this term is the input term. So we have to do some manipulation. 
write the complete state equation that is the third point in the form of ax plus bz and then write the state equation in forms of a matrix. So what we are doing is here we are adding the third term which was missing the bz term so we just write it plus 0 into bz or uh, 0 into vx this is our z. This equation we have just added this so that it conforms to this form and similarly the current equation also where i was missing here i was missing so we write it as 0 i and remaining uh, things remain as it is and now we can write the matrix equation the two inputs uh, the two variables v dot and i dot this is 1 over minus 1 over rc from here we write plus 1 over c from here it is minus 1 over l and 0 and the two variables v and i similarly this for this part we will write 0 and 1 over l and multiplied by uh, v s the input so this is our equation in matrix form for the state variable part. Now we have to also find for the output equation. So write the output equation in this form, exactly same technique will follow. Now to, to write the output equation, we have to actually output is our ix. So we have to find equation for ix and we have already discussed that i x is v over r so to complete the formalities to, to make it in this form c x plus d z we have only one variable v r so we will write 0 into the second variable i we will also write plus 0 into the input variable v x Just we are comparing with this. These two are with the CX variable, SX, and this is with the input variable, Z. And in matrix form, this can be written as 1 over R, 0 from here, VI, and since this is 0, there is no need of writing this, or if you want, you can write 0 and VS. So we have got the matrix equations, two matrix equations, this is for the state variable or state equation and this is for the output equation. Now we need to obtain the values of the constants A, B, C. So now we can find the transfer function, this one, if we know the value of A, B, C. So let's see, compare this and this. So anything multiplied with the state variable is A. So this part is A. Similarly, now putting in the values that are given, we'll find the exact value. So minus 1 divided by R is 1 and C is 1 over 4. So if you put in here, you will get it minus 4. Similarly, 1 over C is 1 over 1 over 4, it will be 4. Similarly, this term will be minus 2 and 0. So this is A. Coming on to B, now compare this with this. So this is B. Again, putting in the values, we get this value for B. C again now compare this with this so this is C and putting in the values we get 1 0 so we have found the three constants required now to find HS we need to find first of all this term in the bracket okay now to find this we have to use the identity matrix S into I minus A so S into identity matrix minus A 
Now S N two identity matrix will make it S zero zero one. S multiply by one S. Here also S multiply by one S. And then minus A. Now minus this matrix. So minus this matrix. And now we know the matrix addition. So adding the two terms or subtracting the two terms, we'll get the, this term. So S plus four minus minus plus. So this is the term that we'll get for S I minus A. Okay. So we have found these three constants. We have also found S I minus A, and now we can. Calculate H S. Now, first of all, we have to find the inverse matrix. This one is the inverse matrix, and we know the formula for an inverse matrix is adjoint of this function divided by the determinant of the function. Now, what is adjoint? I hope you remember adjoint of the matrix is the adjoint of a matrix is the transpose of the cofactors elements of the matrix. So let's see how it is transposing. Now, this is the determinant part. So this will be the determinant. So we are multiplying this here and minus multiplying this the determinant. And the adjoint is transposing. So look here, S4 is here. We transpose. We change the two. So S will come here, and S plus four will come here. And then we change the sign of the other uh, uh, diagonal. So changing the sign. Uh, so this is our adjoint function, and this was the determinant. And the this. Can be uh, manipulated and written like this. Adjoint we are not touching now. So the transfer function now will be. This is the transfer function. This was our S or the inverse function. So first of all we write C. C from here is one zero one zero. Then is the inverse function. So this inverse function we are copying here. Inverse function, and then with that we have to multiply b. So b is zero one. So this, and now we can solve this. So we were here. We'll solve it now. I hope you remember the uh, row column matrix manipulation. So using this this part. Will become eight to s plus eight. So our transfer function will now be one zero, and this this has been replaced with eight to plus eight from here. Again, we multiply. So same technique of the matrix uh, multiplication. So we'll get eight here at the top. One into eight plus zero into this, so it will be eight. Denominator remains same. So this is our transfer function, which is the same thing we would get by directly Laplace transforming this circuit. So if we directly transform the circuit and take Lep uh, or find the um, Transfer function by using this formula, we'll get the same answer. Now, this the technique that we have followed is much more lengthy than doing it directly, but it has an advantage that if there are more than one variables, the real advantage of the state approach comes with the multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So, if there are more than one input and more than one output, then this technique is really useful. And the uh, next example uh, in the next video will highlight uh, this technique.